In this video, I'm going to talk about how to handle returned payments in QuickBooks Online. And I'm going to go through a few different scenarios, so be sure to check the description for timestamps. Now, before I do any entries in QuickBooks, I want to briefly touch on what a customer sale looks like from an accounting standpoint. First of all, the invoice is created, and that is a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to revenue or income. And debits are always on the left, credits are always on the right. And whether something is an increase, decrease depends on the type of account. So if you need to learn debits and credits, I do have some videos on that. But for this, I just want to focus on the general entry. So this is what the invoice creation would look like. And then when the customer pays the invoice, that money will be deposited into the checking account and an entry would be made to show that the invoice was paid. It would be a debit to the checking account and a credit to offset accounts receivable. And this accounts receivable balance will now be zero to show that the customer has paid that invoice and they no longer owe the money. So the balance here would be zero because a debit and a credit would offset each other. And then income or revenue is $800. And then the checking account has an additional $800. If for some reason a payment is returned, then an entry will need to be made to reverse the second entry. In other words, we want to reverse this credit to accounts receivable and reverse the debit to checking. So that is what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm in the QuickBooks sample company, and I'm going to show you, first of all, what would happen or how you would handle a payment if it was never deposited. It just didn't process for some reason. You tried to process their debit or credit card, and it just didn't go through. So let me go to a customer with a payment. So this payment, this $54, let's say someone posted the payment, they processed the debit or credit card, and it just didn't go through to begin with, then they might come back in here and either delete or void this payment. So you have a void and a delete option. You could delete the payment, but if there's some reason that something happened with the payment processing that you might want a record of this, then you could certainly use the void option and actually make some notes regarding what happened. So I'm going to make some notes. So if I were going to void that, I would maybe make a note regarding what happened, and then I would choose more and then void. And that's all you have to do. Now this will create a zero line item in undeposited funds. And if you want to clear that out to keep your bank deposit screen clear, you would just go to new bank deposit and deposit that zero line item. Just so that it doesn't keep showing up. But if I had deleted that payment, then that wouldn't have been an issue at all. And you can see, since I voided the payment, that that invoice is now overdue. It's showing that it's still due from the customer. So this opened the invoice back up so the customer can attempt to pay again. And then just coming back here real quick, when I voided that payment in QuickBooks, it basically reversed the second part of the entry where I talked about the second part was a credit to accounts receivable, debit to checking. I basically reversed that by zeroing out the payment that was posted. In the next example, I'm going to use this deposit right here of $2,862 as an example. I'm going to go ahead and choose to edit so I can show you the deposit. And you can see that this deposit consists of three different payments from three different customers, and they are all check payments. So if one of these checks came back as a returned or non-sufficient funds check, 
then it's going to be a little more complicated to void the payment since it's attached to a deposit. If I try to void this payment, it is going to give me an error message because it's attached to that deposit. You can see the error message right here. So I'm going to use this $800 payment as an example and show you two different ways to handle this. Now, the first method is simply going to be unchecking this deposit so that it's unattached to the deposit and I can go back in and void the payment. But if I do that, then the total of the deposit isn't going to match the bank total. So I would need to add a line item for $800 down here and add funds to deposit. So I'm gonna add an $800 line item. It's important to know that whatever account you use here, you're also gonna use the exact same account for the bank deduction from where the amount of the check was deducted back out of the bank account. I'm gonna use the income account that was related to that invoice itself, but you may have something that you prefer to use. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save and close. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the customer screen. And now I'm going to be able to void this payment. So I would maybe make a note. And choose more void. And then what I want to do is make sure that bank deduction for the $800 is marked to the same income account that I used in that deposit. So I'm using the installation labor income account under landscaping services. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add this. And I'm going to go to the report and show you how that looks. So I'm going to go to the profit and loss and go to that installation income account. And you can see this is the deposit line item here for a positive deposit of $800. And then the deduction for the expense when the check was returned causes this $800 to be subtracted. So it's a positive and a negative and they zero each other out. And then up here, you can see the actual invoice itself for $800 that is still open and still showing as an accounts receivable. If I change this accounting method up here to cash basis, you can no longer see the open invoice because it hasn't been paid yet. Okay, so that is one way to do it. I'm going to undo what I just did and show you a different way. Okay, so I put the payment back up. I put it back in that deposit. I'm going to go ahead and go into the payment and you can see that it shows that it was attached to that original deposit. So it's back to where I started. Now, a second way to handle this is a way that would not disturb this deposit at all. So I'm gonna X back out of this and instead of disturbing the deposit, I'm going to create a journal entry. So I would go to new journal entry and I might change the date to the date that it was deducted back out of the checking account. The actual journal entry itself will be a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to the checking account. So this is reversing the effect of the payment that was posted and deposited to checking. Over here under the name, on the line that says accounts receivable, I would wanna put that customer name. And then I would probably make a memo. I'm gonna go ahead and save and close. And now you can see this journal entry showing up on the customer screen. This shows that they had a return check and now it brings up another $800 that they owe. If I want to resend the invoice to the customer, I could simply 
click on the original payment and uncheck where it's attached or posted to the invoice itself and instead post it to the journal entry. I'm going to go ahead and save and close. So now that posted the payment to the journal entry instead of the invoice, and I could send a reminder, send a note to the customer that their first payment was not valid, it was returned, and they would need to pay that invoice again. And now I'm going to go to the profit and loss so I can look at that real quick. If I click on the installation account, it doesn't show the plus and minus like the other method did. It does show the open invoice though. The way I did it the second time would post actually to accounts receivable. So let me go back to the reports. And if I were to choose accounts receivable, you would see the positive and negative right there from the journal entry and then the original payment. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of clarity and some different options on how you want to handle these returned payments or payments that didn't process. And that's all I wanted to cover today. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and thank you for watching.